optical axis and mechanical axis of a lens. So in order to understand the misalignment between the optical axis and mechanical axis of a lens, first we need to discuss what is the optical axis of a lens. So let's consider we have a lens that has two radii of curvature at each side. The center of the curvature of the right hand side, we call it C1. The center of uh, curvature of the left hand side, we call it C2. So when you have two radii of curvature, you have C1 and C2, the centers of these two uh, curvatures. And the line that connects C1 to C2 in the space, we call it the optical axis of the lens. The reason that we call this line the optical axis of the lens is that it connects the two centers of this lens that has optical power. Because the only surfaces in this lens that has optic that has curvature are these two. And the center of these two that connects together, the line that connects these two centers together, we call it optical axis of a lens. Now, let's consider another example. Let's consider we have a plano convex lens. Plano convex lenses are a kind of lenses that has one flat surface and one curved surface. So in this scenario, we have only you only have one optical surface or one surface with optical power. In this scenario, the center of this curvature of the right hand side uh, curved surface is C1 and the line that is passes through C1 and is perpendicular to the flat surface, we call it the optical axis of the lens. Because for this flat surface, we have a, we can say we have a uh, radius of curvature of infinity. So we cannot say where is the center. So, but based on this definition, the line that is perpendicular to the uh, flat surface and passes through the center of the right surface or the left surface, we call it the optical axis of this plano convex lens. Now let's talk about the mechanical axis of the lens. Practically all lens elements have a cylindrical rims. And these rims produced by, uh, by edge grinding after these two surfaces are polished. So the cylinder that covers these rims has a center and that center, we call it mechanical axis of a lens. So we introduce the optical axis of the lens. Now the mechanical axis of the lens is the center of this cylinder that covers the rim of the lens. So let's review this concept again. We have a lens that a cylinder passes through the rim of the lens. This cylinder has a center and this center line is the mechanical axis of a lens and then if that mechanical axis of the lens completely lies on the same line or coincide completely with the optical axis of the lens which is the line that connects c1 to c2 we can call this lens system is centered this is a centered or perfectly aligned lens i mean just individually i mean in terms of the mechanical axis and optical axis. So now we need to discuss a topic that how we can do edge, how we can how we can align this mechanical and optical axis of the lens, or how we can do how we can edge make an edge for a lens. So the typical setup for edging a lens has a few components. First, we have a very precise spindle that usually they use it. Uh, I mean, they use. Uh, they make. Uh, they make it by air bearing system. That this spindle should be very precise. We have a bell that has a curved surface close to the radius of, of the curvature of the lens, and the lens that can sit on this curved surface. And we have a grinding wheel that has two kinds of motion: axial motion in this direction and transverse motion. Which you know the transverse motion. Uh, speed can by changing the you know the transfer speed we can change the amount of the material that can for example remove from the edge of the lens per second or per minute 
and these two are rotating both of them are rotating so that's the kind of setup that they use for aging a lens or making a mechanical axis of the lens so let's consider a ideal scenario when the lens is flawlessly aligned to the bell this is the bell and the lens is completely aligned to the bell as i mentioned before this is the mechanical axis of the lens the mechanical axis of the lens comes from this cylinder and the mechanical axis of the uh, spindle should be perfectly aligned with the uh, grinding wheel so that's the mechanical axis of the lens the if we consider we have another uh, ray, another a spherical shape or in 2d a curvature and the center of the curvature as i said is c1 if this surface seated if the center of the curvature seated very well on this axis we can say this system is perfectly aligned for the c2 which is this side it always should if uh, the lens seated well on the bell this point should be always lies on the mechanical axis of the lens so the main concern should be c1 that how c1 can sit on the lens so now let's consider another scenario as so even by i you can see that c2 this surface this is the mecha me mechanical axis of the lens as i said because c1 has a self-centric system this point coincides with that line perfectly but c2 we have a little bit offset and that offset caused the uh, situation that the optical axis of the lens which passes through c1 c2 is not aligned with the mechanical axis of the lens so the lens has a inherent geometric wedge angle so let's take a deeper look into this uh, wedge angle so let's consider we have a sphere into a space we have another sphere as i mentioned the optical axis is aligned from the center of this sphere to the second one and the intersection of these two spheres is a lens without any rim and this is the optical axis of the lens now consider we have a situation that the mechanical axis of the lens is not aligned with the optical axis of the lens so in this scenario the grinding will cut and remove the material material that is outside of this cylinder and the end result is we have a lens that has wedge as, as you can see the top hand side and the top side and bottom side are not they don't have the same thickness so in this scenario we have a lens that has a uh, intrinsic wedge and w is the total wobble or the the difference between the maximum thickness of the lens to the minimum thickness if we divide this thickness to the rate to to twice of the radii of curvature of, to the twice of the clear aperture of the lens which is h in this uh, graph in this uh, image we can actually this is the formula for the wedge angle and the beam deviation that caused by this uh, wedge angle from the normal situation is equal to n minus 1 which is the refractiveness of the lens times theta then theta as i said w over 2h so let's review this concept again we have two sphere the intersection of these two sphere is a perfect lens and then when we have a mechanical axis that is not aligned with the optical axis we have a wedged lens so now let's consider another scenario as i mentioned for this surface for surface c1 it's all if this lens is seated well on the bell this one is it will coincide very well to the mechanical axis but in this case we can see that we have a little bit offset so for c2 also we have offset so in this case the optical axis again is not aligned to the lens that kind of misalignment for c1 comes from different situation for example when you have a very small particle let's say five micron particles between the bell and the lens or the pitch 
is a kind of uh, adhesive that they use for attaching glass to metal by heating heating it up so that one might might cause that kind of issue and generally you know we can have that kind of situation also so now let's consider that kind of situation what is the what kind of methods we can use for minimizing this error the simplest mechanical tool is illustrated in this figure uh, the tip of a precise dial gauge gently touches the exposed polished surface at the radii of H outside of the clear aperture of the lens. It should be considered that this is a, a polished surface, but it is outside of the, uh, the clear aperture of the lens. As we always put about one, two, three millimeters uh, H, that you know that's just for mechanical purpose and you know we don't want to use it for optical surface when this uh, needle rotates slowly the needle oscillates and shows the surface the total surface wobble and when we measure this we can minimize it by adjusting the lens and that's a very good way for aligning the optical axis of the lens as i said because this is a curved surface optical axis of the lens to the mechanical axis of the lens. There is a similar method that instead of using a laser, instead of using a dial gauge, we can use a point light source uh, at some convenient distance from the center of the lens. And you can see a real or virtual image of the source formed by reflection from the surface of the lens. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, eye loop, microscope, telescope, uh, or any kind of imaging system like a camera. And when the image is, ro when the, the spindle rotates slowly, if there is a wobble, the image also rotates slowly and, the, and it shows that the lens is decentered. If the image is steady, you can say the lens is perfectly aligned, the optical axis of the lens. I mean, I'm generally talking about this surface because the other surface, we suppose that it's seated well on the bell, but for the next surface, which is this surface, if that one is not wobbling or moving, we can say the optical axis of the lens is aligned with the mechanical axis. Another technique for measuring the runout of the decentered lens surface is a sketch in this figure. As you can see here, a collimated light uh, that can come from a cross heretical pattern is directed through a lens system and it goes reflected from a bending mirror, passes through a reflecting prism or a cube, and then it goes to a two spindle that, you know, they press the lens together and has a self-centering system on both sides. And we have another detector that from the bottom detector we are measuring the the total run out, the total uh, beam deviation from the lens. Uh, so in this scenario, the reflection from the top surface goes to the detector, and when it is rotating slowly, if the lens is perfectly aligned to the mechanical axis, if the optical axis is perfectly aligned to the mechanical axis, you can minimize the radii the radius of curvature of the rotating image on the ccd but for aligning using this system there is a z factor that this z factor uh, following this equation which is equal to 2yc over r yc is the distance from here to there 2yc is the total distance divided by r minus 2yc for r1 r2 and this Z factor should be less than 0.56. If you want to have a automatic system for aligning the system, you should consider this uh, Z factor also. So here are the reference. Here is the reference that I used. Thank you very much.